show. I want to start this off by saying congratulations to all of our winter sports teams. The wrestling team was our big one, our speech team, our swim team, and our bowling team. They all performed extremely well, and I hope they do great next season as well. Now, now we're talking about performing, let's talk about our first story, Drop Dead. Uh, hi, I'm Zach Bernat, and my character is Victor LePew, the director. Uh, our show, Drop Dead, is a play within a play. So while there are actors on stage, they're also pretending to be in a show. And in the first act, I'm out in the audience with the rest of you, ever so often going on stage and being mean. But the second half of the show, I'm backstage, because that's what the director does, take care of everything backstage while the show's going on. So. That's basically what my character does in the show. Hello, I am Alex Kluchar, and my character is P.G. Banks. Like my character J.P. Morgan in Ragtime, P.G. Banks is a wealthy fellow and doesn't care about anybody else on the lower level. And he's a jerk, comes off stage with giant head, and I can really relate to it. Yes, my name is Michael Stefanik, and my character in this play is called Philip. And he's basically um, like the stage manager who really, 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 really likes Victor Le Pew, um, and wants to be just like him. And basically he's trying to do all in his power to get Victor to notice him. So most of his time on stage is him pleasing Victor in some way, shape, or form. Uh, hi, my name's Tegan, and I play a character that's known as Alabama Miller. What happens is this guy is an overly passionate playwright, so everyone in this play is interpreting it differently, and they're messing it up so badly that I actually have to burst in here and yell at everyone and tell them what to do. The play is like my baby, and I entrusted it to them like they were the babysitters, except they drop kick my baby into a fireplace. The main point is that the person is kind of nuts, so I have to be a little over the top about my lines. The hardest part about preparing for my role what kind of character Philip was because he has a lot of difficult scenes to interpret and getting the lines down the way the directors want it because it's really up to the person who presents the character to find out what he is or represents. How did I go about memorizing my lines? I find it easier to memorize them on stage rather than um, off the stage without any people because it's like a conversation. I just have to keep talking to them to figure it out. What I do to prepare for memorizing is I basically just look over my lines a lot and keep saying them over and over again until I have them down. And then when I finally start in the play, I will keep doing my lines over and sooner or later they kind of just flow in and it works. Uh, what makes me good at memorizing lines? Probably just knowing where my blocking is throughout the show. If I can learn where I'm moving, then I can learn what I'm saying while I'm doing it. And that's always just come really easy to me. What's it like having blocking together? What do you think, Michael? It's definitely nothing like this. It's painful! <laughs> blocking is just kind of where the heck you're supposed to be on stage at a given time. Blocking is a person picking up water and drinking it, and just walking to a certain character to talk to them, stuff like that. What it means for us is basically we have to have a lot of close interactions with each other. We have to find out where we have to run at some parts. At some parts, we have to figure out how to interact with each other and really stay at what we're doing. What we do together on stage is I'm the director and he's my stage manager. So basically, he does like exactly what I tell him. And he does everything in his power to just like make the play go the way that I want it to. I mean, that involves like going to stores, you know, running around and fixing things, you know, just kind of being my own personal servant. We we work very well as a, as a team. Yes, I would say it, it adds a lot of it adds a lot of comedy. Plus, we spend a lot of time together both on and off stage, and we have a lot of chemistry together, yeah. which helps us work well with yeah. each other. We've been friends for a really long time, yes. so it works out well when we're on stage together and we get to laugh about like whatever we do, and we build off of each other very well. Yeah. There's a lot of comedic parts between me and Mike. Our uh, off-stage relationship affects our relationship on stage, because usually off stage, he's about the alpha male of everything, and I usually keep to myself. And it's hard for me because we have to reverse roles as soon as I come on stage. If 
it was reversed like off stage, it'd be a lot easier. When he says like alpha male, he means that uh, I just I know what I'm I know what I'm doing. Uh, I just kind of know like how things should go off stage, you know, where props should be, you know, how the stage works, you know, just generally like general character ideas and things along those lines. But people who like are fighting off stage can generally try and be extraordinarily professional when they get on stage. That's just a general thing that actors have to do. But we're all we're all friends here, and we all get along. We all get along great when we get on stage, and we we always have been able to build off of each other in every in every show here. So I feel like. The four of us being in drama together really does create create and build onto our already existing relationship. Like I, before I moved here, one of the first things I did was join the drama club, and that's how I met. Ragtime. Yeah, ragtime. You're my dancing partner. And that's how I met these three, and it was one of some of my first friends here. So it really helps build relationships. Drama helps with a lot of things. Drama helps people become closer and together. And with 10 people on stage, it's basically like family. Come see the show. Buybacks. Buybacks is a store that sells used video games, movies, and music. And now we're going to find out what makes it so special. Hello, how are you guys? Well, how are you? I'm doing good. Why would people want to shop here? People will want to shop here for a number of reasons. I think one of the best advantages we have is that we give cash for your items. What is the benefit of coming here? We have a different selection. Really we also know. sell more than just games. We have DVDs, yeah. CDs, you know, just more of a variety of stuff, even older stuff, which is something that they don't have unless yeah. you go online. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a certain way um, when you come to like picking and choosing what CDs or different movies or games you want to have here? Yeah. In order for us to take an inventory, the disc in which the CD or DVD or whatever is on has to be in good enough condition for us to either fix or is sellable and we have to have all the artwork and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, newer releases we pay a little bit more for, but for the older movies we give anywhere from like 10 cents to maybe like three, five dollars. Okay, and when you're getting like newer things like Let's say somebody wants to trade in like a brand new game, mm -hmm. and they don't want to go to game stuff, and they would rather come here. Would you give like almost full price if a game was just like opened one time, played, and they just didn't like it? It'd be a lot more than what we'd normally get for something that's older. Could you give us some information on the store's background at all? Sure. Uh, Jamic Productions is who owns the store. It was first named CD Warehouse, and it started here about 20 years ago. Um, back then, music was really popular, DVDs weren't really about, so this place specialized in vinyls and CDs. And then it changed to buybacks, and now we deal with primarily DVDs. Uh, how often do you get like frequent customers that come in here? Oh, at least. Our frequent yeah. customers come at least at least once a week. Do a lot of people come from GameStop and then like right into here? Yeah, sometimes they uh, refer them to us a lot, and then if we don't have anything, sometimes we'll refer them. Uh, our customers of them, it just depends. But also, a lot of people just come into buybacks thinking we're GameStop, yeah, so... Yeah, we get that a lot. People walk in and yeah. okay. realize it's not the right store. Um, now, I heard you guys are moving soon. Could you give us more information? We're moving right by the mall on Market Street in 224, right next to Super and across from Five Guys. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have triple the inventories. That's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Where are your other locations at? Our other locations are actually across the United States. A lot in we have, Texas. yeah, we have a lot of them in Texas. Um, our closest one is in Niles, Ohio, by the Eastwood Mall. But I'd say there are probably about 30 other locations. Okay, awesome. So the new place is a lot nicer. Yeah. It's so nice. We have new carpet. We have new paint. <laughs> we have new computers. New sound system. Two computers too. We're like new. Brand new. So you're gonna play like music and stuff with the sound system? Yeah. Right? Yes. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's and a, we can pick that's, it. That's a sweet upgrade. Yeah. Okay, and last of all, uh, what are your names? Oh, my name is Lauren Minsky. I'm <laughs> Vince. Okay. All right, well, Lauren, Vince, it's been a pleasure, and thank you so much for this interview. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Now let's go on to our final story about everyone's favorite subject, politics. All right, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about the uh, primary process itself and what you do on your part. 
Um, well, I'm the chief cook and bottle washer. In the general election, I'll be much busier mm -hmm. uh, because the party has uh, opponents in almost all of the races, including the presidential race and a Senate race and a congressional race. So we'll be very busy come October. Does the presidential race impact your plans at all? Or? Oh, yeah. They, they come in, they send a, you know, a bevy of volunteers in. Uh, they ask for my advice, places to go, things to do, you know, how to coordinate it. It, it, it is really a lot of science to, to politics. How much work does it involve to actually set up the primary? There is a lot more to voting than what people think. There is a lot of work in it. Um, they have to, there's a lot of cross-checking, and anytime there, uh, the, anything that is touched, both the Democrat and the Republican are there when it's touched to sort of watch each other. But there's a lot that goes into it, including absentee mailings, making sure the integrity of the voting process, uh, the voting locations, uh, in-person voting. So there's, there's so much involved in it. It, it, it would really take a week uh, to sort of show you, but there's a lot more to it than a lot of people think. And could you tell me the basic requirements to go out and vote during the primary elections? Well, in a primary election, you have to either declare yourself a Republican or Democrat, or do an issues only. And then you get that party's ballot. So the Republican ballot only has Republicans on it. The Democratic ballot only has Democrats on it. If you're voting an issues only ballot, then you just get a ballot that has just the issues only. There are a couple issues on this ballot. I think there's a senior levy and a couple other renewals, school levies, things like that. Those would be on an issues only ballot. And do you have any expectations for turnout this year compared it's to other It's going to be higher, years? yeah, especially on the Republican side than the Democratic side. Donald Trump has really ginned up the interest. What we have found is sort of a unique phenomenon in that a lot of Democrats are requesting Republican ballots. Uh, so far, my estimate's going to be about 20% of Democrats are going to cross over and vote Republican. We took a look at the political stance of the student body. The results may surprise you. Bernie Sanders won with 24%, Donald Trump in close second with 21 and 40% undecided. Here's a close view at what the students thought.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into this week of the show. I'm your host, Zach Bernat. Remember, the play opens up on March 18th and 19th. Say good luck to the band and the choir. Now with the show.